here's the deal. The Blackmagic Fairlight desktop console is awesome. A device exactly like this was on my wish list for years before Blackmagic came out with it. It's also $3,600. I just bought this for $75. Let's talk about it. This is the Korg Nano Control 2. And in reality, it is a universe apart from the Fairlight desktop console. The console is tailor-made for the Fusion page. The quality looks unbelievable. It has some really valuable features like motorized faders. And the Nano Control 2 is a MIDI controller. It can be used in any number of programs and of the few it uniquely calls out and is meant to be compatible with, Fairlight is not one of them. But if you're like me and you just take any opportunity to uh, take controls from inside of software to something tactile that you can actually touch and control, you might be interested in this. Let me show you how it works. Like I said, the Nano Control 2 is designed to work with select DAW software. That's DAW Digital Audio Workstation. And you can tell the device what software you want to use it with uh, by pressing certain buttons when you first connect the USB. These are all laid out in the user manual. And just to start, I went ahead and tried the solution for Pro Tools and it does what I want it to. And once I had that connected inside DaVinci Resolve, you go to DaVinci Resolve, Preferences, Control Panels, and under Audio Console, you have the option to use MIDI Audio Console. I click that, you go to HUI Compatible, Input Nano Control. We aren't sending any MIDI output, so you could change this to Nano Control as well or use whatever pops up. I, I don't know what this is. <laughs> Hi, it's me from a little bit later. I just figured out that the MIDI output in the settings, if you set that back to the Korg Nano Control 2, then it enables these nifty lights. So when you solo or mute something, the buttons light up. Cool. You might need a restart at that point, but if you set up your device with the Pro Tools preset and you change those settings, uh, maybe after a restart, you will have control. Let me jump right over to the Fairlight page. Most of the functionality of this will work on either the Fairlight or the Edit page, um, with a few exceptions that are a little important, but we'll get to those. But in the Fairlight page, you have access to your main transport controls over here. Play, stop, fast forward, rewind. So I can click play and it will start playing through my scene. I can see the little preview up here, and if we jump back to the edit page, you'll see I have three different gameplay videos playing at the same time. I'll jump back to Fairlight, and you'll see some options here on the layers, like where we have a record, solo, and mute. But if we extend this mixer panel over here, you also see the much more traditional audio layout. And once this is set up, I can go to that first fader, and if I move that up or down, it will move the fader inside the software. And I can solo that channel or mute it as well. Right now the arm for record isn't working for me. Hey, I'm back again. So about recording. If I wanna use either this record prime or record button, I need to make sure that on a track in the mixer up here at input, I have an input set there. I'm gonna connect these uh, Rode Wireless Go, which I'm using to record right now, but I'm gonna click patch. I'll X out of that. Then on the control surface, you can press this little R to record prime it, which is the same thing as this, pressing this little button here. And again, currently I might figure this out soon, uh, but the record button on the transport controls does not correctly toggle this one. Hey, I just figured it out. You need to press and hold the record button and then click play to start recording just like this. To start recording just like this. And the dial up here is also your panning controls. If I solo this track three and then play, I can pan that back and forth. Cool. And if we jump back to the edit page, uh, those main controls still work. I can mute channel three, unmute channel two, and now I have that Halo audio. Unmute channel one, we have this Star Wars audio coming in. And that bare bones control of just having a fader, even a fader that isn't motorized here, is what I was really looking for. Let me show off one specific use case. I'm gonna hop back to the Fairlight page. I'm gonna increase this track size here for audio just so I can see that, scale out a bit. And we're gonna look at automation, which is something that you can do with just a mouse, but having these controls makes it so much easier. I'm gonna come up here to this automation toggle here, turn that on, and I'm going to enable fader. I'm gonna come over to my mixer as well, enable automation on this track two, which is this Halo channel. 
and then I am going to play and it is going to start recording whatever move I make with this fader. So I'm gonna play. I'm just gonna bring it down. And then bring it back up. Pause to stop and now if I go back, you'll see that fader has turned to green. And as it plays, Fader comes down, holds, and then we'll move back up when we get to that point. Now, like most things in Resolve, there are 12 ways to do everything. You could always set manual keyframes to this or fade it in and out somewhere else. You could set up uh, ducking in a compressor, but especially if you're dealing with multiple tracks of files and you're trying to very quickly uh, balance them out, you, you can either use these faders to just very quickly set levels with no automation and then change them as needed or toggle this on and really mix your video live. And with these dials controlling panning, you could even record the pan for a track. Is this everything you could ever ask for? No, of course not. But it is tactile controls for controlling the audio in your edit. I'm really curious to see how much of this will actually work its way into my workflow. I need to really find a great desk layout. Maybe I'll actually get this, the speed editor back here and work this around that. That could be pretty cool. But I love faders and this gives them to me for less than $3,600. If you're interested in checking out the Korg Nano Control, a link will be in the description. That is an Amazon affiliates link. So if you check it out through that, it definitely helps me out. And because this is a general uh, MIDI control surface, it can be used for other things as well. I'm looking in for options for just how I can use this generally in Windows. There are some interesting utilities. I might put out a video on some of those later if that uncovers anything interesting. Is this kind of thing interesting to you at all? Uh, please let me know. I haven't really talked about anything like this before, uh, but I saw this and I thought it would work for what I wanted to do, so I jumped on it and it's pretty cool. I would absolutely love to see what a maybe $1,000 control surface from Blackmagic would look like for use in Fairlight, but all the features on their main desktop console are just so cool, so I don't know. That's all, I just wanted to make a little video about this. I haven't seen too many people talking about using a MIDI control service like this in Resolve, so I thought I would. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.